We'll send it back over to you, Jen. Yeah, how about hundreds of miles away? When yeah. I talk about that wind, we're going to go down to D.C., take a look at the wind blowing these flags around the bottom of the Washington Monument. By the way, I just learned 1,776 steps here inside the Washington Monument. Appropriate, right? Um, if you're going to try to get some steps in today, this wind, man, this wind is going to get you. If you're out there for the morning walk, morning run, uh, don't go into the wind. It could actually be dangerous. We've got winds potentially as high as 60 miles per hour. D.C., looking at you, winds going up to the mid-40s. Wind gusts this afternoon are going to stay gusty through the afternoon. Um, of course, on the bridges, there are some limited wind restrictions. The Bay Bridge, for example, over the Chesapeake. Uh, if you have an empty uh, trailer truck, you're not driving that across today, that's for sure. We're going to be watching these winds stay through the afternoon. In fact, ramping up through the morning. Wind advisories in 15 states, whether they're wind warnings um, or in purple or the advisories in, uh, in lighter purple. We've got that already causing issues at the airports. LaGuardia running about three hour delays right now. Look at this. Winds have been gusting to 43. It's the wind direction that actually makes all the difference. West Northwest, not a good one for us at LaGuardia. I think Newark will follow suit soon too with delays. Tough wind direction for you in Newark as well. Look at these winds potentially through the morning gusting to 50 or 60 miles per hour. You think about that in a tropical storm, right? But it's going to be a bright, sunny day, just very windy. Be careful getting out of the car. You're going to see that wind take your door very easily today. You And that's going to be a real concern, actually, through the day with those power outages. We're going to go to another weather story we're following in Texas, the Lone Star State. We start with you and looking at Houston, where not as warm as yesterday. What was it, 85 degrees yesterday? You set another record. Things are changing, getting cooler. And actually, you're going to need the umbrellas as we get some rain into the area. So let's take a look at the next pattern change coming here. And we're already feeling it in New Mexico and western Texas. It makes its way across the eastern part of the state. For Houston, it comes in the way of thunderstorms tomorrow. A couple of showers possible, maybe this morning, maybe uh, later today as well. But the big deal is the thunderstorms that will track in tomorrow. What we're dealing with is a big upper level low and all of the, the rising air out there associated with that, a cold pocket of air aloft, creating some snow showers, some freezing rain. We've got freezing rain and very gusty winds and pine spring. Texas this morning and we're going to watch that be a factor for you from West Texas back to New Mexico and Southern Colorado maybe some freezing rain up into parts of Kansas too but then let's talk about the thunderstorms because out ahead of it we're going to see a surface load developing moisture coming back into the picture we're going to be watching for storms potentially tomorrow and to Wednesday as we track this low east there'll be instability out here temperatures of course will be mild dew points will be coming back up as well and by tomorrow morning we could start your Tuesday morning your Valentine's Day in Central Texas Texas with a line of thunderstorms. So we watch that track east and through the day in Houston, midday thunderstorms blasting on in. We see it go through southern Arkansas, Louisiana, getting into parts of the Mid-South by the time we get into overnight Tuesday into Wednesday morning. So busy times ahead here. Let's talk about what else we're dealing with out there. West Coast busy too. Yeah, breaking in be a big factor today and both where the snow is happening, where it's already happened because it's going to blow it around, reducing visibility, plus where there's never been any snow from the system. We're still dealing with the wind. So We'll get to all of that. I want to show you where we're going to see additional snow. Jim just talked about the potential over here in Maine to get, you know, another 5 to 8, even 8 to 12 up there in northeastern Maine, inches of snow as we see this low develop. And it's kind of cool when you look at the wind barbs right here on this map, you can see how they sort of spiral around right in our low pressure right here. This low pressure still has more than 10 millibars to go to strengthen. So we're going to see an increase in the winds, and that's going to keep the banding going on as well when it comes to this snowfall. So, and the low not too quick to move out either. So, you know, we're in this for the rest of today. We see the snow bands. you got to watch those enhancements and you watch the way they're rotating around, around that low pressure coming in in a uh, counterclockwise manner. Portland visibility is up to a mile like you could see in Jim's shot there, but from Augusta to Rockland, our visibility down to a quarter mile. So we are right in the thick of it right now. Take a look. You can see where, especially down towards Rockland, we are just getting rocked with snow and wind at this very moment. So we put this into motion into a forecast and we'll see the snow sticking around up in Maine through the day today. Boston, it's about done. Not to say you can't get a couple more showers out there of snowfall, but the heavy stuff seems to be over for you. It's really all about Maine when it comes to additional snowfall. But the wind blowing around everything else that fell through the overnight. You know, in central New York right now, I saw some video this morning. You guys have low visibility, not because of falling snow, but because the wind is whipping up that very dry snow. Bangor, it looks like this. Winds gusting to nearly 50, and we'll see that snow wrapping up after lunchtime here weather now for New England. Jen, it, very it is, interesting. It is interesting, and these storms are bombing out, as uh, we like to call it, our bombogenesis. We'll talk about what that is here. Now, 
you actually use a hurricane to, com to compare to an extra tropical storm that's happening right now to explain. So think of a hurricane, very strong low pressure at the center of it. But the thing about a hurricane is the biggest pressure changes happen in a pretty short distance. Pressure change makes the wind move faster. And so that's why you have such strong winds at the center of a hurricane. And really, it could be only 50 to 100 miles across where you have the biggest pressure change and the strongest winds. Now, the thing about an extra tropical cyclone or extra tropical low pressure system, like the storm that we're seeing, seeing right now affect us in Maine. It's much more spread out. It might have the same central low pressure, but you're going to see that pressure change happen over a lot much more real estate, like hundreds of miles. And that's why the wind energy is spread out so much more. We've got wind advisories up in 15 states all the way down the Appalachians. Strong winds expected again today and ramping up here in Maine right through the day. Kelly. All right, from the East Coast.